Have you been able to leverage any jailbreak in Python and get a reverse shell? If not, this video is for you. Let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode of the Basilic CTF challenge. We were able to gain remote code execution on the server by essentially jailbreaking the Python uh, context. And um, now it's only a matter of time before we get that reverse shell. If you're interested in learning more about these techniques, if you are interested in pursuing an ethical hacker career, then I encourage you to head over to academy.thehackerish.com. There you will find online courses that you can enroll to and just find a suitable course for you. It should give you a great start. So because we were able to run ID, can we list the content directory? I know there is a list dir function in the OS module, but I, I just want to see how this could work. Uh, by the way, if you see a difference in color here, it's not an accident. Burp tells me here that, hey, you need to encode this to be a valid request. So if I send this, I get nothing. This uh, basically, I guess, means that this is because of the space. So if I want to bypass this space, I can't use it like this because that would break the HTTP request. I can't use URL encoding it. So what I can do is use dollar and then IFS. This is equivalent to a space. If I send, now I get the result. Okay, so with this in mind, we can also try to get a reverse shell. Let's see if we have netcat installed dollar IFS. Yep, it seems that we have it under bin. So why don't we just use it to catch or to send a reverse shell? We want to execute bin sh and I want my IP address. Now, because I'm not using any VPN, I need to essentially open a port to the internet. I can't do that. I don't want to do it on my router. So what I can do is using ngrok. I've already talked about it in previous challenges, so I'm not going to take too much time here. ngrok, and then I'm going to exit from this Python and grab a listener on that port. And now uh, we can just use this exposed URL by ngrok to get a reverse shell. Remember, I don't want this, I want just spaces. And I want $IFS everywhere I have a space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, come on, come on. Yep, so if everything goes well, we should have a shell back. Hit run or send. It's taking some time, it's a good indicator. And drum rolls. We don't have a prompt, but it says here connection received on localhost. So if I just type ID, voila, I have access to the server using a reverse shell and our previous conclusions are confirmed here. The user running the web server is actually Python. Perfect, so now that we have that, let's see if we can elevate our privileges to another user. First of all, I'm just going to use a uh, more somewhat comfortable shell, pty.spawn, bin bash. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And after that, let's see where we are in the root. Okay, cd opt. We have the web server, we have calc test pi, which is owned by root. What else do we have under slash home? Going to list recursively the content. So we have user basilic, so that's a new user. And remember from the uh, challenge information, 
It says here your goal is to compromise the different users of the server and gain root privileges, which means that we need to go through that user first. And inside that we have a secret. Okay. So let's go to the user basilic and cat that secret. Hmm, permission denied, yeah, because it's owned by Basilic. What about the encrypted password? Others can read it, so we can. Cat.encrypted password. Hmm, this is some gibberish. Because it's encrypted, I guess. So why don't we copy that file? to the web server and download it. OPT, web server. Okay. And let's use another terminal and curl or wget, whatever. wget http ctf12, I guess, dot rootme.org slash um, dot encrypted password. Oh, I need to put in the right port number. 5000. And uh, did we get it? Let's cat the encrypted. Yes, we got it. Now, what do I have in the directory? of the challenge. I have encrypted password and I also have the key, the public key, which I've downloaded uh, in the first episode. By the way, all the episodes should be available in the description box. You can just click on each one of them and watch them. I highly encourage that. What would be even better is you spinning a room inside Rootme and uh, trying to hack this box along the way. This way you will learn quicker and uh, the concepts would stick longer in your mind. So we have a public key, okay? And we have an encrypted password. What if um, this password was encrypted using the private key, which is mapped to this public key? And since this is a really small public key, I wonder if it's uh, immune against vulnerabilities. Now. Cryptography is another whole uh, field in information security. And um, Rootme has also um, challenges dedicated just for that. It's You can find them under cryptanalysis. We're going to use some tools that allow us to crack any vulnerable uh, keys such as these. So I'm going to CD into my hacking tools. There's a famous project called RSA CTF tool. So just Google it. It's a GitHub project. So I want to use the virtual environment to spin it up. So I'm going to copy those two commands. Okay, now we are in our virtual environment. I'm going to run Python RSA CTF tool. And the way to use it is uh, you specify, I want to recover the plain text from the public key. Well, first of all, I just want to see if the public key is vulnerable. So I'm going to say, hey, public key, which is under CTF, Zillic, and uh, key.pub. And I want dash dash private to show the private key. It's going to run multiple known attacks. And then it spits out the private key. Cool, perfect. So now that we have the private key, we're going to use it in order to decrypt the encrypted password. This is what we're going to attempt in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell to receive a notification once it goes live. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.